Hey guys, this is Glauco from Magical Nova, and I'm here to summarize or give you an abridged version of Microsoft's press conference. If you didn't watch it and you don't want to watch the full thing, don't worry, I've got you covered. Bonnie Ross opened the show with Halo 5 gameplay. They showed a, a chunk of the story, uh, or what it seems to be a co-op story. I don't know if there will be a single-player only experience. There probably will, because uh, they, they were talking about Master Chief. Uh, being su having successfully invaded something that they see in the distance, which is a guardian. That, you know, that giant metal structure you see right there. So maybe in the single player campaign you play as Master Chief and you, you play the events surrounding the main events of Master Chief as this four player squad. This is a co-op story. Uh, it seems well fleshed out. I, I'm not a big Halo player. So I can't really go into much detail about what's new. I mean, it looks, it looks, sorry, I bumped the table. It looks a lot like Halo. That's what I can tell you. Don't know if there are any new weapons or anything of the sort. Then they showed a, a trailer montage for multiplayer. I think we see new vehicles there. I think we see new weapons as well. And yeah, Halo looks like Halo. Look, looks all right. Halo fans will be sure to like this, I, I think. Next, they showed a new IP, Xbox One exclusive. It's just a cinematic trailer, so we don't actually see any gameplay, but I like the setting a lot. You play as this little girl, it would seem, in a desert. It kind of has a Mad Max vibe to it, but at the same time, it's cyberpunkish with robots everywhere. Uh, really, really curious about this game. It's called ReCore, coming out in Spring 2016, and uh, it's an Xbox One exclusive. But, as I said, there, there was no gameplay, so no idea if it, this uh, looks any good or not. I like the setting, and that's pretty much it. Phil Spencer comes on stage then, the savior of Xbox, been making all kinds of right decisions and saving the console. And he announces something big, probably the biggest thing to happen on the, on the Microsoft's press conference. Xbox One will now be backwards compatible. They're bringing Xbox 360 games and making them compatible with Xbox One. Now, as I understand it, not every game is compatible, but they're making progress towards unlocking everything. So games that you own digitally with your Xbox 360 will automatically start appearing on Xbox One. And, did, and the physical copies also work, you can just put the CD and it will go. But it seems limited to a handful of games, and they seem to be making progress towards unlocking the whole library later down the road. This is a really big deal, backwards compatibility seemed impossible at first, or at least they said it was impossible. And now, hey, all your library suddenly gains value because you can now play it in the new console, that's really, really awesome. Uh, they announced a new controller, the Elite controller. I think this was no news, I think uh, this was announced pre-3. You can switch parts, you can uh, re re keybind the buttons to different buttons. It looks like an awesome, awesome controller. Todd Howard come, came to Microsoft to talk about Fallout 4 as well. Most of what he showed uh, is stuff we've seen at Bethesda, so go watch the Bethesda video if you if you want to know more about Fallout. Uh, there, there was a section where he showed a new weapon, the laser musket, which you roll up and just shoot a laser, which goes then into a new mission where he suits up and he starts killing a bunch of dudes in his power armor and then faces a, a de death claw. Now, the second big thing to happen in, uh, in, in Microsoft's press conference was the fact that Fallout 4 will support mods on the Xbox One. This was something that Todd Howard seemed to, to have asked Microsoft to do, and uh, once again, seemed impossible at first, but mods will now be available on Xbox One which is just a great selling point for the console. Obviously, PC is still the best place to buy it, but if you don't have the money to build a, a good PC and to play Fallout 4, not that it will require a beefy machine to play, but if you're thinking of playing this game on console, Xbox One is definitely the place to go now that uh, we know there's mod support. Now, they didn't mention it, but there was a lower third that appeared for a short period, and it said that Fallout 3 would be included with Fallout 4. So I don't know if this is an Xbox uh, One thing, where you buy Fallout 4 and you get Fallout 3 for free. Not entirely sure what's going on there, they didn't even mention it. It does say Xbox exclusive offer, so I'm guessing PlayStation 4, not a good place for Fallout. Peter Moore came on stage afterwards, I don't want to take long to talk about this, but he... Uh, 
presented EA Access, which is a service that's been available for a while. Basically, you pay a monthly fee to EA to play some of their games without buying those games. But if you want to play new games like FIFA 16, when it comes out, you will have to buy the game separately. You will have a 10% discount, I think. And on top of that, EA Access gives you early access to games before they're out. So let's say you can play the beta for the new Battlefield, which will come out God knows when. You can play the beta, and then once the beta is over, they'll take the game away from you and release it. Not on EA Access, but on the store, where you have a discount. And later down the road, like months after release, it will come to EA Access. And then you're able to play it if you're paying the monthly fee. I think it's a terrible service. I wouldn't uh, advise anyone to, to, to buy this. Peter Moore also announced Plants vs. Zombies 2, which, honestly, the first Plants vs. Zombies is not that old. I'm not entirely sure what they're gonna do with a new one. It looks like a DLC pack disguised as a new game, to be honest. Like, there's new characters, there's new weapons. If the core game is the same, like, what are you doing? Why are you releasing a new one? Uh, it's coming out in spring of next year, so until then I think we'll have plenty of time to see if it's worth it or not. Peter Moore leaves the stage, finally, and we have Forza Motorsport 6. They have a car at the stage again, because it's a thing, and it's a car trailer, so they all look the same, really. Forza has been doing really good in this, in this, in this genre, so... I'm sure it will be a good game, it's an Xbox One exclusive, comes out September 15th, but the trailer doesn't really show anything. Then we have uh, Dark Souls 3, that was a leak, a couple of leaked screenshots, so we knew this was a thing. And uh, other than confirming that the game exists, I mean, we see some crazy character design, which we were kind of expecting. The, the world is all foggy again, it's... This world of Dark Souls, there, there's never any sun for us to praise or, <laughs> or stuff like that. Uh, they didn't show any gameplay, no new game systems, which was something I was looking forward to. I wanted to see what what was new about the Dark Souls game, and uh, instead they, they kind of just show the setting, and the setting is more Dark Souls. Nothing particularly revealing, nothing new here besides, hey, the, the, we're making this game and it's coming out early 2016. Then they went into The Division, The Division has a new trailer. I'm not too optimistic about The Division, to be honest. It feels a bit like Destiny. You go into places, you shoot people to get better loot, and there's barely anything besides it. Looks like a, a conglomerate of side activities from other Ubisoft open world games, but this time you have a weapon. So what's exclusive about Xbox One for The Division? Well, uh, exclusive beta. First on Xbox One this December. So if you want to play The Division first, who cares? They showed a trailer for Rainbow Six Siege. Again, nothing new, nothing we hadn't seen before. It's coming out this October, so that's great. They showed another trailer for Gigantic. There's plenty of this on the web already. This is no new game, so I'm not even gonna spend a lot of time talking about this, but it's exclusive to Xbox One and Windows 10. You can join the beta on August 15 if you enjoy a third-person style MOBA, and it's gonna be free to play. Then they talked about ID at Xbox, which is the Xbox indie collection thing. So they had that indie montage, lots of games coming through and passing really fast. Below is one that I'm really excited about, but they didn't highlight that one. Instead, they highlighted four other games. The first one was Tacoma from the developers of Gone Home. Seems like another first-person explorer or walking simulator, if you will. It's set in space, so they can do funny things with gravity, I guess. But not a lot was shown from that game. The second game was Ashen, which looks to be a multiplayer survival, but the, the world doesn't seem as open as these games usually are. Looks like you have a labyrinth where collaboration is required, but the developer also mentions you never knowing whether the people you encounter are hostile or if they're friendly. So it could be really, really interesting, potentially. Next game is Beyond Eyes, which has a very unique premise. Uh, you play as a blind person, a blind girl, and you experience the game using your other senses. So the art style is a little weird. I, I wouldn't say the game looks great, but the premise itself made me curious about this game, so I do want to try it out. And then finally Cuphead, which is an Xbox exclusive. It looks like a cartoon from the 30s, and it's a platformer where you have a gun and you shoot stuff, and uh, it, it looks like a very, very chaotic platformer. But what, what's really cool about this game is, is the art style. It's the 30s cartoon look, which they have just nailed there. Really, really, really cool. 
coming out in 1936, plus 80 years. So that's uh, 2016, yes. So Chris Carla, the uh, head for ID at Xbox, he presented these games and then he talks about something called Xbox Game Preview, which is basically Xbox's version of Steam Early Access. They're bringing some unfinished games to Xbox and allowing players to, you know, pay for them and start playing them. Early Access is kind of a mess on Steam, but they, they, they seem to be going through a filtering process and only bringing those big games, those games that have some polish to them, to the Xbox platform. They mentioned three titles, Shelter, Elite Dangerous and DayZ. So if they do filter out the, the, the bad titles, the Steam trash, that is early access, then yes, this could potentially be really, really cool. And speaking of DayZ, Dean Hall talks about a new game that he's got coming out. It's called Ion. I have no idea what it is about. It's in space as well, and the trailer is weird. That's all I can say about it. I have no clue what this game is. It's coming out to Xbox Game Preview and PC. Probably early access on Steam. Brian Horton is up next with Tomb Raider. Rise of the Tomb Raider had a, a brand new trailer. The trailer didn't show anything I wanted. It shows mostly walking and climbing up a mountain and falling down the mountain. And then at the end we have a small montage with some really cool tombs, which was what I was looking for. I was looking for tomb raiding, I was looking for exploration, I was looking for hunting, combat. Uh, but most of the demo is just the, the, the freaking mountain thing. Rise of the Tomb Raider looks a lot like the Tomb Raider reboot, which is a good thing in my book, as I really like that game. Hopefully we have a little more tomb raiding in this game, which seems to be the case uh, from the trailers we've seen so far. There's always uh, some tombs in there. Really excited for this. It's coming out first on Xbox One on November 10th. I think next year for PC and PS4, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. Rare came up next with 30 games for 30 bucks. A single box with a collection of rare games called Rare Replay. It's got some cult classics, some of the community favorites. It's, it's, yeah, I think it should be worth it. I don't know how well some of those games hold up with time, but hey, it's it's a, an awesome piece of history to, to own, you know? And Rare didn't just come on stage for old games, they also have a new title that they are announcing, it's called Sea of Thieves, and it's an Xbox One exclusive. It seems to be an open world survival game, or an MMO. I mean, there there's people with names on top of their heads. And uh, you can pilot ships. There's sea combat, you can be a pirate. You can have your own crew. It looks, uh, it looks really cool. I still haven't seen any open world game multiplayer that has done ships. Okay, and this is this is uncharted territory. It could potentially be a, a really awesome game. Make your own ship, captain your own ship, conquer the seas with your own fleet. Potentially, it could it could be really really awesome. Then we had a trailer for Fable Legends. I don't care about Fable Legends, so I'm gonna skip it. And then we had Hololens. Hololens is the augmented reality device from from Microsoft, and they showcased it with Minecraft, and it's really impressive. I'm not gonna lie, it's really impressive, the, the stuff they've done with it. And if this was indeed a live demo, man, that thing is crazy. Now, I wouldn't want to play Minecraft this way. This is not how I want to play Minecraft, but at the same time, I really don't want to play Minecraft in any way. So I guess that's a bit unfair. But it looks like the potential is there for some really creative things. I, I hope a developer just picks this thing up and makes something that is exclusive to HoloLens. Like, the only way to experience your game is through HoloLens, augmented reality stuff. Because the technology seems, seems fucking amazing. Alright, and the show closer was Gears of War 4, which has a very, very generic trailer. Most of it is walking around, there's barely any shooting. And I mean, yeah, it looks like Gears of War, even the re time your reload thing is, is back. It's very dark, there's monsters, the, the monster design looks cool, but they didn't show much of it. But hey, Gears of War 4 is coming out, and they're also relaunching the first Gears of War as Gears of War Ultimate Edition, revamped graphics for Xbox One. Alright, and that was it. Phil Spencer comes back on stage, says that now is the time for you to buy his console. And then there's a gaming montage at the end. I didn't really like this press conference. I think it was really thin on games, on good games. And the good games they had to show, like Dark Souls 3, they didn't show much of it. And Rise of the Tomb Raider, I didn't really see what I wanted to see. I think ReCore could be potentially good, but uh, the, the big strong points of this press conference were definitely the announcement of the backwards compatibility and mod support coming to Fallout on Xbox One. 
those were the two big things to happen and i think they they're a big deal okay Ex this cannot be ignored by sony especially backwards compatibility because fallout you know it, it's one game i'm i'm sure sony will uh, have an other exclusives or other exclusive things for their games but backwards compatibility is a, a console feature and I don't think Sony will be able to ignore this. We'll see how they respond later today on their press conference. Thank you very much for watching. Let us know in the comments which features excited you, which features made you jump out, out of your seats or which features made you laugh uh, over at the Microsoft press conference, which games interested you, if any. And while you're down there in the comments, click the like button and subscribe for more E3 coverage. I'm going to be talking about all the press conferences. I've been Globku. Take care, everyone. See you next time.